At this point, we've used a number of functions that we said were curried. These included things like fill and tabulate or fold. The curried functions were the ones that took several argument lists. So instead of just having a single list with multiple arguments in it, it was broken up so that there were multiple different lists. Each list could have one or more arguments in it. Now, we can create currying in a number of different ways. One way is to actually have a function that returns a function, because one of the whole ideas of currying is that you can partially apply these functions. So a simple example of this would be to think of add not as a function of two integers. That's how we normally think of add. But instead to think of add as a function that takes one integer and then returns a function that takes another integer and gives you back an integer. And so basically you pass it the first value to add and then that gives you another function that's waiting for the second value to add. If we do this syntactically here, we can say that this gives you back some function where y gives x plus y. And we can enter that in. If I call add now, and if I just give it a single argument, I get back a function. If I pass it two arguments, I get back the sum of those two values. The interesting thing about currying, as I said, is the partial application. So I can make a new function called plus five that is add of five. And then I can call plus five and apply it to whatever other value I have, and I will get back that value uh, with five added to it. So this is kind of, and you might think of it as the long syntax for currying. It's the very deliberate syntax for currying. Scala provides a simpler syntax, which we saw when we wrote our fold, and there we just make multiple argument lists. And this is going to return an int, and it's just x plus y. Add two, we can call it with five and six, which looks like what we had done up here with our earlier add. One thing to note is that the syntax for doing a partial application isn't quite the same. When we declare things this way, Scala wants us to be explicit and say, when we're only partially applying the function, we need to tell it we really meant to do that so that it knows. And we do that by putting an underscore where the other argument would come, and that gives us back the function, the same thing that we had using the longer syntax. And so we can plus five B, or actually let's see, plus five underscore two equals add two of five underscore. We get something because we've curried this that then we'll do, we can complete the application later. Okay, so that's an example of the currying, but you might wonder why would I ever want to do this? And well, there are a few reasons why you would want to, to do this. And they come around because of some of the things that Scala does or doesn't allow you to do with various argument lists. We recently saw the variable length argument list, and we said that a variable length argument list has to be the last thing in the list. Well, one of the things that I often like to, to calculate is, for example, a course average where we have multiple components to the average. So for example, there might be some tests and uh, some assignments and uh, some quizzes, okay? And I need to give these different types. Well, I could make each one of these a list of values. So a list of int and then another list of int, another list of int. But that isn't really what I want to do. I'd rather have it so that these could be passed in as var args, you know, so that I could just specify these things by passing in however, my, however many I wanted. 
But as we said when we introduced the variable length argument list, this, this can only be done as the last argument in a list. So I can't do what I kind of want to do. And this makes sense because if I called course average and I passed it six numbers, does that mean that there are four tests, one assignment, one quiz? Or does it mean that there are two of each? Or what does it mean? Scala wouldn't know how to partition them. But if we curry this function, if we curry it, then each one goes in its own argument list. And therefore, it is the last thing in its argument list. And so we could, I need a star on this last one. Then we could calculate an average using these things where we could say that, for example, maybe tests are worth 40% of the grade times test.sum divided by test.length plus and the assignments are 40% of the grade I'm not putting any safeguards in here to make sure that we don't have zero values, but that's because this is supposed to be a short example talking about currying. Times quizzes.sum divided by quizzes.length. We'll see if I type that all in right. And then I can calculate a course average where we had a 90 and an 80 on the tests and 100 and a 96 on the assignments, and then a 50 and a 32 on the quizzes. And these are all var args, so I could pass in more or less in each case, and that works because we've curried this. The other situation where this can be helpful is because Scala allows us, when you have a single argument to something, to pass in a code block. So when I declared my plus, let's go back up here to where I have my, or my add, my add to. If I wanted one of these to be a longer calculation, so our original add, uh, let's see, um, def, the normal add would take an x as an int and a y as an int and just give us back x plus y. That would be our, our normal version, our uncurried version. But what if I wanted to do something that was kind of long for x? Well, I could put in quite a bit of code inside of curly braces here. So I could you know, read something and, and split it up. And maybe I have something like I want this to be a read line dot split on spaces dot map to integers and then add that up. So I'm expecting them to type in, uh, so I've made this one expression, I didn't really need a code block for it. Uh, if I had something where I wanted, where I needed it to be split across multiple lines for, for some reason, then I would want to have that as a block inside of curly braces and then I'd have whatever my y value was there. One of the things that Scala allows you to do is if a, an argument list only has one element to it and you're going to make it long, you can dispense with the parentheses and only put the curly braces there. So our add to can be called with curly braces and curly braces, five and six. And that's perfectly happy because these are argument lists that only take one value, but I could have spread them out over multiple lines. Five, and here, print line, high, five, print line, there. This isn't really something that has much purpose in doing it, but there are nice little side effects there. And of course my result is 11, and I got the high there to print because we, we had these things that were in the code block for when they were evaluated. So that's the other reason why you might want to do currying is because you're expecting people to pass in code blocks. 
why would you expect people to pass in code blocks? Well, that happens to be the subject of the next video when we talk about pass by name.